back, we're going to move into uh, the first of our study session, of two study sessions that we have this weekend. And the first one is Adeline Place at 3801 San Pablo Avenue. Okay, this is a redevelopment project on the former check cashing site, uh, which is located at the northwest corner of San Pablo, Adeline, and West MacArthur. It's about a 13,000 square foot parcel, and the proposal is to build a four story building which will accommodate 36 condo units, and there will be a ground level residential space. So at the first level, you have about 2,500 uh, square feet of retail space, and the rest of the area at the ground level is accommodated by parking. The parking will be provided in form of parking lifts, uh, 43 parking spaces in parking lifts, and then nine regular uh, spaces. On the three floors above the parking and the retail areas will accommodate, uh, each floor will have 12 units, and on each floor there will be five three-bedroom units and seven uh, two-bedroom units. And all the three floors are, did I say that right? No. I don't think so. No. I would love to see three-bedroom no. units, but no, I don't I think did not this say project that right. has it's any. Five two-bedroom units and seven one-bedroom units. So each floor will accommodate uh, five, one be uh, five two bedroom and seven one bedroom. And the floor plans repeat themselves uh, exactly on the three levels. Maru, before you change the plan, where does the stairway in the upper left corner go to? Upper left. This up on the terrace. Keep going up. Up, 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 up. up. You kept going along that west wall. Go back to the west wall. There you go. Stairway to heaven. What's that? How does that relate to the rest? I understand. I assume it's an emergency access point, but I don't see where that ties into the rest of the building. And I looked at the other floors we have. Yeah. Sure. I, I think it's not decided yet, right? No. No? Okay. Go ahead. Uh, that stair is for emergency egress. It, uh, it's a dual height space in that parking floor below. And there's actually a suspended enclosed hallway that you don't see on the plan. Go oh, down into that triangle in the garage. It goes, it goes across here. Oh. So it meets up with the other stair in that hallway. And it doesn't interfere with the guest parking? No, because it's up in the air. OK, thank you. So this is sort of a section that will show you how it's going to work out. The parking lifts and uh, the height. The height is 47 feet. Uh, this is a general commercial zone, where, and the height, uh, the height limits are 40 feet by right, which can be increased to 55 feet with a conditional use permit. Uh, in terms of density, it's working out to 120 units per acre. Uh, there is no maximum or prescribed residential density in the CG zone. For comparative purposes, uh, Andante was constructed at 69 units per acre, key route lofts, uh, lofts at 45, senior center is at 75 units per acre, and green city lofts is at 68 units per acre. This is a small site, and in order to make, uh, in order for the project to work out, it does need that kind of uh, uh, density. Uh, in terms of uh, permits required, it's not asking for any kind of a variance. Uh, it will be a use permit to allow multifamily housing and a use permit to allow uh, the height, which is 47 feet, and a design review for a new building. In terms of, excuse me, Maru, it's also going to require a development agreement, a, a disposition and development agreement with the redevelopment agency and city. But that won't be in front of the commission. Uh, it will come for recommendation. 
these are some of the elevations. We feel it's, it's a well-designed, well-sited building. It sort of matches, it's compatible with the surrounding um, development and will be a good addition to what is now a blighted piece of project. If there's any questions, sure. I'll be happy to answer. There's an indication of a roof uh, deck or a roof trellis. It's, well, I guess let's wait for the applicant yeah. to make the presentation there for the details. Hello, I'm Stuart Rickard. I'm with PlaceWorks. Uh, this parcel, as you probably know, has been owned by the city for uh, two or three years, and an RFP was uh, prepared, which I responded to, and uh, uh, my proposal uh, had two main um, features, which was uh, significant affordability and uh, compatibility architecturally with the adjacent building. Um, uh, we had a community meeting uh, last night that went very well, and uh, uh, the neighbors like the project. Um, there are 36 units, 13 of them are, are affordable. It's uh, intended to be a green building incorporating a sustainable uh, design, and um, I'm available for questions. I'll turn it over to Sudish now. What, are you becoming the new architect of choice around town now? <laughs> I mean, I have no problem with that. I, I'm he, glad. He uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good evening. Sudish Mahindra, SCFM Design Studio. Um, I, let's see here. Find my pointer. Let me just uh, go right into it. This, this is, uh, it's actually quite a historic uh, a junction of, of various streets. As you can see, the history of it before the freeway, the MacArthur Freeway, that's how you came from San Francisco, and then you dispersed from here, essentially, to all sorts of areas. And this, di this, uh, this Google uh, Earth image that I picked up uh, shows it so well that this was um, really a uh, disbursement point for transit and all sorts of uh, activities. So here we are. Um, it's gone through a lot of changes. And it's uh, a little closer up. You can see that the diagram at one time, of course, was much more clear of the, the buildings up to the property lines and so on. But over time, things have changed. Ob uh, obviously, there was a taller building here at one point where the check cashing used to be up until recently. And, but that fabric, that diagram is starting to get reinforced. The, the uh, Avalon building has done that. Uh, and so there is now, of course, an opportunity here and also across the street. This is, of course, also a challenge, which is the Jug Liquor site. The, some of the, just a quick kind of review of what's uh, uh, in a different capacity. I, I, I've been involved in some facade improvements as part of the uh, program, uh, facade improvement program in the city. And so what we're starting to see, of course, is uh, uh, this is a small building. And every, all of the pieces help further down the street on San Pablo that has gone through a facade improvement program. We are right now in construction. With the, Ma the owners of MAS had applied for facade improvement grant, and they are now under construction. If some of you have driven by, they have noticed that these, these columns that were cut off at some point uh, uh, years ago are, are being restored. They have not put the fabric awnings yet. So this is a very handsome building actually across the street. So we're really hoping that aesthetically it's going to uh, contribute to this area. The Golden Gate building, which is uh, uh, on the east side of San Pablo and south side of MacArthur, is also uh, right now being, being discussed with the, with the new owners to how to bring back life in this building and, and bring back street level retail. So in this context, 
Uh, that's what's happening from the, from the building standpoint, but the space itself is a very complicated intersection. And so one of, the, one of the other things, I want to dwell on that right now, that we are just starting to work with, uh, with the uh, different agencies in the city here, is to see how we can make this more pedestrian friendly. This, this is just to dramatize how the pedestrian movement works. And as you can see, if I was here at Golden Gate and I had to go across here legally, it, it's, it's a 20 minute walk, I think, by the time you go like this and like this and like this. And of course, no one does that. They just wait for the traffic. And same thing over here. So some very, some very odd situations are happening here. Uh, it's not an easy puzzle to solve because Caltrans involved and there's all kinds of, however, we are con we're confident that a plan can be developed which is going to increase the amount of green space. Uh, it's too much asphalt in this area. Make it more pedestrian friendly. Have, have streetscape that, that, is, uh, that defines the, uh, the streets and which will complement, of course, the buildings as they fill up. The, uh, the, uh, this is the view, as you can see now, um, looking north, of course, and you can, you can tell by the profile of this building how there's obviously a missing piece here that at one time was adjacent to that building. Our, as you get closer, the area, uh, th this sort of illustrates, uh, not only are there, the, there is sort of the dearth of pedestrian areas, but there's also areas that need sort of looking at in terms of what can be done, whether it is uh, slowing the traffic down, either parking, parallel parking. So there, there's all this, all this that needs to be, I think, looked at at the same time. The, are we hoping, what, what we would like to do is, we think that the, this building has a, 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 a great potential for anchoring this corner in a way that Avalon building started to do conceptually. I think they did the right thing. Unfortunately, I think at a detail level, it, it doesn't open up at the street level here. It's, there's just an exit stair. So as a concept, I think they went the right way, but they didn't quite <coughs> solve it. But as a form, we're doing something very similar that is hugging the uh, property line and sort of curving it so that as you're crossing from the south side, uh, as those residents that are, that are going to be occupying some of the newer loft buildings, you're crossing towards San Pablo, this building is going to kind of orient you and make you feel like there's something around, around the corner. Uh, the plan is, uh, is very simple in, in one way. It fills the entire site. The challenge for us here like in any infill project, and the smaller it is, the more challenging it is, is to how to accommodate parking without sacrificing uh, an entire ground floor frontage or a large amount of it, which is very pedestrian unfriendly. How to, how to provide for parking as well as have the parking not take up the exterior. The uh, solution that we came up with was the lift solution, which for us, uh, is I think works very well because it allows us to have this, this yellow space which could be one, two, three retail spaces, flexible depending on, on when uh, as uh, leases turn over. So it could be anywhere from one to three spaces occupying this, this major frontage here. And the parking is entered from this side. Uh, the, the lobby to the building is on San Pablo and it's right here, and the, uh, it allows for some outdoor activity that you can see with, with this will be a very flexible facade where it can accommodate different size stores, the stores that like to have the doors open and have even, even merchandise just kind of peeking out. The, the lifts have um, been very successful in many of the recent buildings uh, particularly in, down, in, 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 in and around downtown Berkeley. And here are three examples of the most recent buildings. There are, there are other buildings that are older, the Gaia building, 
just slightly older than some of these, but these are the most recent examples of uh, this kind of approach where you have infill buildings where the parking is, uh, is really almost uh, uh, invisible, but, but is fully accommodated. The, the, our plan, is, as Miru described, uh, we have essentially, we're picking up on the, the depth of our neighboring building and wrapping the units around and back here, we are fortunate that this, the neighboring building does not have any, uh, uh, that these units will be looking over, that, that this is really a one-story space here. And that allows us to have units that are, even though they're not very large, they range from 620, the smallest unit, 620 square feet to, uh, for, uh, uh, on the small side for one bedroom to 900 and 50 approximately on the larger side for the two bedrooms. Even though they are that size, all the units have a lot of frontage, exterior frontage. So this would be a typical two bedroom unit and that has a substantial frontage, which is in a way what the site is blessed with. We do have a lot of frontage, so I think it's a, it's a good thing there'll be a lot of eyes on the street and, and, and uh, activate as much as possible this, this whole area. The, uh, this is a general concept we obviously need, need to develop more uh, and, and come back to you, but our thought is this is how it works. We're really playing up the street level uh, facade. Uh, it'll have a canopy that'll be of a scale that, is, that you can appreciate at this very wide intersection so that you can have tall storefronts right here and three stories. Uh, there was a question about the uh, uh, trellis at, at the top and our plan right now is to have a trellis there but not have a roof deck that is accessible for the uh, for the building owners uh, and that's largely uh, being driven by uh, for, for this size building our experience has been for the number of units this has the initial cost of having that that accessible space, elevator going up, all of those, and but more importantly, the cost of, to the homeowners on a monthly basis to maintain that uh, is, is, we think it'll be cost prohibitive and, 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 uh, and difficult to do. However, we, we still think that it's a symbolic gesture, not so much to the residents, but to this whole area. That's us, it's our way of bringing uh, as much green and softness back to this, to this neighborhood, and I think in, in a lot of ways for pedestrians and motorists more so than the residents. Uh, the, what we are hoping is that this building, when it's finished, it, it's going to add to what you see that's already developing. All these little pieces that do exist there, but there's there are not enough of them for you for you to appreciate. Uh, but this area is really full of wonderful gems like this. And, uh, and even this kind of, uh, uh, our neighbor uh, is, is a wonderful building. And this, uh, this projector is not really doing a fair job of, uh, this is a fall picture that I took last year and it was just wonderful. And if I had shown that to anybody on, and said this is on San Pablo at that intersection, they would say, no, it's not. There's no s such th tree, but it's, it's just a gorgeous tree. Uh, two or three trees, liquid ambers that are in front of this building. So that's what we're hoping we're going to add on to, and more and more of our neighbors will do that. So that will conclude my presentation. Um, I have a question about this terrace roof. Would that be planted and accessible to the, the residents of the building? Uh, uh, n no, our thought is uh, that the really for this size building for 36 units is it, we feel it's cost prohibitive to have access to the roof the stair the elevators and to do the roof deck that is protected uh, protects the roof membrane and so on for waterproofing and we've we found that the maintenance of that actually is a bigger a bigger thing well, and they the don't get terrace, used I mean, always couldn't you just walk up a flight of stairs I mean I don't know well, we well we'll have to make it that. accessible are you asking about yeah. Oh, well, it's the terrace oh, roof. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I misunderstood you. Yes, the second floor. Let me go back. Uh, 
this, this terrace on the second floor will be accessible. In fact, we are, our plans will be developed in such a way that a, a substantial portion of this terrace, because it's such a skinny kind of long space, will be given over to the, to as private patios for, le, for, the, for the units on that deck. However, we are, uh, we're keen to introduce a, a kind of a common area which we reap for, for the residents that are on the upper floors. If they just want a little space under the, the sun, but still in, 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 uh, in their building, they could just walk down and use that small area. Well, um, I guess, how, how would they use it? Would it be planted? And would uh, it'll be, be planted, areas? yeah, and seating area, benches and, and plants. But that's a relatively small area, right? I mean, you can't put a lot of seating and planting there. Uh, and, uh, yes, it, it'll be a small area like, like this. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> are, we, are we open for questions now? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, let's move on into do our free do, do you see those uh, private patios being fenced off? Uh, yes. So they would have very low sort of screens uh, because the ones that are further down. You see, you mentioned, you mentioned yes. something which is, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Oh, you mentioned something which, which I agree with the way that the, the site is laid out. You said it's really uh, the motorists will be getting more of the impact than the residents. And that's exactly what this this strikes me as it's beautifully placed it's beautifully developed from the outside as a resident in this particular building I, I I'd have a question because uh, it seems to me that there's a tremendous lack of greenery and a tremendous lack of an ability for the residents in the building to congregate and get together and to me, that's more like warehousing folks than it is having a residential community. And to me, that's, a, that's an important aspect of what we're trying to accomplish. I think you've done a beautiful job on the outside. I think the design is excellent. I just really question the quality of life in that building. And, and maybe I'm, I'm missing some things, but that's, that's really my concern. If I were living in that, that building, would would there be a, a place we could work together to, to to hang out a little bit? There's a I, I agree with your idea of having a space where all the residents get together, but that's minuscule. I mean, you you, you know, I, I don't know how big that is, but it looks relatively small. Anyway, that's my thought. It, it it seems to me along those lines that perhaps, um, although yes, it may be expensive to to maintain for for the homeowners. The amenity of uh, a pleasant roof deck may just be exactly what, what is needed here. Well, I guess I, this sort mm -hmm. of goes back to the stormwater guidelines. I, I don't think this project's going to meet those guidelines co or come even close. We, they don't have yeah. to? We, we, we're much smaller than an acre site. Oh, okay. We're only 13,000. Could you come, so, Peter, so that it's on, on uh, the broadcast, could you come to the microphone? Hi, Peter Schultz, Allen, environmental analyst for the city. Um, as we talked about earlier with the guidelines, there are two kind of dates. There's uh, what we've already passed is uh, February 15th of this year, where projects that are an acre or larger in size have to meet the new what's called C3, provision C3 requirements. Those kick in for 10,000 square feet or above August of 2006. So any project between now and then that gets a planning commission approval um, or a planning approval would not have to meet, uh, if it's under an acre, it would not have to meet those requirements. Now, there still are other requirements that are, you know, that were in, f in power or in place before that, which is MEP, maximum extent practic practicable, which means they have to do the most they can that's practicable. In this particular site, you know, where it's a lot line development um, and it's infill and it's going to be have other kind of green aspects to it, green building, the city has, you know, then some more. Um, decision over what is maximum extent practical. So is, is a green building, is it going to be uh, a, apply for LEED certification? LEED, LEED doesn't have a great 
multifamily program. There's a there's a local program by the Alameda County Waste Management Authority, which you may know about the uh, multifamily guidelines, and we'd be going by those. Okay, so you would you would uh, design to those guidelines? Yes. Yes. Well, while we're still on that same terrace, it, if you look at the section, it shows terrace and then it shows roof. It seems like you've missed an opportunity to extend your terrace out. If that, and maybe there's a structural reason that I that I don't see, or uh, it just seems like that that common area interspersed in the between the private areas is going to be r real awkward to utilize. Well, uh, I think I, I think what you're seeing is a sort of a, a diagrammatic section. In other words, uh, what we had envisioned is we're trying to balance the the fact that this is such a long, skinny site that we feel as a practical matter, it's really the area that's closest to the sort of the center of the building with the elevator and the stair are that's going to get the common use. Now, we could take the rest of it and give larger, much larger patios to the residents, but then that's a cost factor again because it's more costly. So I think, I think what I want to say is this is more diagrammatic. We're going to be balancing three elements, which is private patios for some of those units, a, a public gathering sort of a patio space, and, and, and the leftover sort of spaces that you say, they will be inaccessible uh, roof areas. Uh, let me go beyond that. I think that's a great idea, and all of that area should be usable because it's protected. That's one of the things that mm -hmm. is a, problems often a problem oftentimes with roof decks is when the air is still and the sun is just right, they're usable, but oftentimes they're too exposed. And that has, uh, it's protected. Um, and in a, on an afternoon sunny day, you're going to get good sun there. So I think that's a great idea, and we would incorporate that. So there's, so better there's no reason it. that the, it's just. Uh, you no, know. there's no reason why we no. couldn't extend a, a, a walking surface across right. that entire, entire yeah triangle because it actually goes up to yeah. the property line is there. He, no, not just that, no, to the here, top, here, right? Here, right. Right. Yeah. We just need to develop that more, I think, simply put. And I think along those lines, if you look at the emergency access out of the stairwell, there's a complication with the doorways there. Someone leaving the building itself, the door open would interrupt and prevent someone right. from getting it. So you, uh, my suggestion is just to open up that entire wall. Um, on the west side of the building there mm -hmm. and provide access from the common hallway interior to the building out into the terrace. So you're actually invited out there rather than having to go out two emergency exits to get out onto the terrace. You have a bank of windows there, which is nice, but if you could have doors that open out onto that common terrace area, I think that would be a, a great improvement. You right there. Right there. Right. And then to the to the east of that is the bank of windows that you have into the right. hallway. Right. That could be a, that a wall be of patio. doors. That could be patio right. doors. I, I've got um, a couple other comments that I'll just get right into. Um, you've got about 2,000 something square feet of retail on the ground level, which is great. I have concerns about your design for service access where the trash is going. You've got walk-through doors that will not work for that much retail. We now know that from the courtyards and the dumpster that still to this day lives at 65th and Hollis <laughs> at the Starbucks, which is a very small retail area yeah, constantly. I never driving by. I've never seen it. I'll do a little chart and I'll bring the, okay. chart. <laughs> the chart. I mean, that's true for the mm -hmm. interior, the, the resident trash disposal. I think you just got service use that needs to be worked out. You've got the maybe 100 feet or so um, along MacArthur that has no windows, appears to be pretty dead on the ground level uh, with no planting wall, no trellis. I, we don't have a landscape plan yet, so that's going to be important to make sure that that's not a dead zone and to try to bring the window of the retail as far west as possible in enlivening that sidewalk there, not just at the corner, but along that entire frontage. Um, 
if if you can pull up to the facade uh, of the whole building, um, I I that one actually looks better. There's a there's a, a drawing. Uh, oh, it's in your foundation rather than the schematic. Um, the I don't. I think the windows, the pedestrian scale is great. The awnings give some excitement. If there's not going to be a roof deck, I think it's um, uh, insincere to put a trellis up there with, with plantings. It has nothing to do with the building. It has nothing to do with the use. Um, I think what you really need is some, something architectural to the top four, three floors of this building. There's nothing going on there. and. You know, it's sort of a slick, simple 60, 70 design. I don't see anything that even hints at residential up there. Um, I understand you can't do terraces and balconies <coughs> and things that would be expensive, but, uh, and I'm not sure how to come up with a solution to do something there. Obviously, greening up the frontage along the sidewalks will be important. Getting big trees along MacArthur and San Pablo will be important for the people living in there to to um, improve their space, but I just, I don't see much going on with the top three floors of the whole facade to this building. Um, and I'm not, I don't have any great solution um, or suggestions on What about some, it. I mean, because that's sort of a western exposure and, you know, it can get pretty hot. What about some sort of a awning kind of concept? Uh, on the windows. Yes, we can. Do, we do, can do, certainly that would provide we, some relief and provide a little bit more visual interest. Yeah, or recessing the windows. I, yeah. I mean, the treatment to the building to the north is wonderful. They've got details around everything. Yes. You even showed photographs mm -hmm. there of a historic reference. Um, and I realize cost is a big issue here, but just yeah, there's I, some way to enliven that. Right. To, you, to want, hint you want it. some articulation, right? And, and the awning, mm -hmm. you know, my thinking, I was thinking the awning mm -hmm. too, but. My thinking on the awning is that if you have an awning over each one, you've really disrupted that curve, mm -hmm. you know, and you've really sort of like, you know, it's it, you, you've masked the problem rather than taking care of it. So, uh, I I hadn't noticed that, Jim, until you mentioned it. But yeah, I, maybe know, it's something. larger windows. I, I'm not or sure yeah. what it is. I like the idea. Yeah, I like recessed. the idea. We we also. we actually intend to do that. Can I just add something to that? I think that I. Uh, I think we wanted to come to you with the study session kind of early on. Uh, mm -hmm. We were even debating among ourselves whether we should have even elevations at this stage. And so what I'm saying is I don't disagree with you. I just think we haven't developed the elevations enough. So this, what we've drawn is not a fair representation of what we intend to but you, you this do. This is an opportunity but, to hear But from I think this yeah. is what we, we want like to hear from you, what you yeah. want, sure. yes. Yes, it sort of reinforces what we've been thinking or sends us in a slightly different direction. Yeah. And, and, you know, like recessing the windows or yes. having some kind of uh, bollard or something that, uh, you know. Like a pilaster. Or you or think yeah, yeah, something like, like a, a little vertical interest that uh, begins to, you know, not, not as much. I mean, you have a lot of vertical interest on the north side of the building and then on the MacArthur Boulevard side. But that, as it goes around the corner, it's yeah. just very flat. Right, mm. exactly. I think part of what you even show in this schematic is the panes to the old building to the north. It just it enlivens that whole. It's a wonderful building. Um, so you've got some options, obviously, with the color. And I like the vertical bays that you've got in there, the mm -hmm. continuous bays that break up that mass. But it just seems there's got to be something that happens in that wonderful curve that. I don't know, it makes it look better. It has great, it has great potential. Mm -hmm. right. And yeah, I agree with, with Jim, the, the, the faux um, trellis has got to go. I mean, maybe what you can do is provide a, a more defined parapet along there that would provide some architectural relief. Or echo the awning mm -hmm. at the pedestrian yeah. level. Yeah. <laughs> on, on the um, storefront, I know that Mixed use is uh, is the reason, and and the liner uh, use to separate the parking from the street, etc. But are we building by promoting these mixed use? Are we just building more vacant storefronts? Because when do these things get filled up? Yeah. We are seeing an awful lot of these 
required liner buildings being constructed. I, I, We're filling I, up on I might ask side. the, huh? They're filling up on Hollis Street. Are they? Yeah. Oh. We've got a subway or this is not going in, but it's filling up. <laughs> <laughs> a sub, oh, okay. uh, we, hey, we uh, have actually, one. I, we, well, one, one yeah, thing that's, that's uh, interesting about this project is that the retail space would be uh, a condominium that could be owned by the user and we have a, a party interested in oh. 2,000 square feet of that 2,500. Would it be a restaurant? or? It's not a restaurant but it's an exciting retail use uh -huh. that looks great from the street. So I that think you can't you'll disclose right now. No, I can't. Victoria's this is the secret. <laughs> Just, uh, well, well, I think that uh, to your point about uh, refilling those spaces. Well, I, I think um, what has happened, and this is not uh, Emeryville problem. This is a problem in many cities. Is that the first batch of uh, we've had this so much uh, so all these years we have sort of segregated functions. So that we've had experts developers who, who can do very good residential but don't know a thing about retail and vice versa, experts who can do very good commercial. Not And so what you saw in the last 10 years, uh, and to me, uh, uh, Dante is, is a perfect example of, of poorly planned retail. And uh, if you look at it, look, it, it looks like the building is squeezing the retail out of the, there's no presence in that. And th that's just one aesthetic thing, the practical things. So. One of the reasons you're, you're seeing some of these spaces not fill up is they are, not, they are just done because the developer's told to do it. And so he, he doesn't know uh, how he or she doesn't know how because they're really residential developers. Now they're starting to change, I think, with more sophistication. And, uh, and the other thing is they, they don't, they work there. It becomes a self-fulfilling sort of prophecy. They will, because they're not confident about whether they can get any rent from this space. They'll make their numbers work, assuming that'll stay vacant. And then they don't know how to market that property. And they don't probably even want to. I mean, the fact that Avalon sat vacant for so long, it cannot be just that it was, uh, no, nobody wants to be here. And that is changing now that the marketing of that building, and you're seeing new tenants move in there. But our thing about added incentive of ownership is, I think that's exciting to us. This is not a lot of retail space, so we're not risking a lot. This is just 2,000. All we need is one or two people who, who want to have ownership. I think when retailers have ownership in, in the area, they're going to give it their best shot and not just move on because the first six months their sales weren't, weren't great. So. You know, the retail that, that, that you've depicted, I think, in some of this were, was a, a cafe type of uh, situation and that was uh, you know that, that's that, obligatory every, every new building has yeah, a cafe and, and that's <laughs> that's why I yeah okay that's what I was wondering okay that's the, the bistro effect yeah. <laughs> but but it could be you know a furniture store it could be a, a clothing store but I, I think what is what is unique is if you notice San Pablo Avenue um, further up on Dwight in Berkeley, that whole area had absolutely no retail. Mm -hmm. And um, all the she-she retail was 4th Street and then of course other areas that established retail. But that has emerged in, the, in the just recent past with, in spite of the fact that they've had recycling places near them, there's just new sort of local uh, uh, people that have a stake and all kinds of products, uh, and I think they, our neighbor, for example, right here where we had the community meeting last night, Metro at Home, she has, a, uh, oops, she has a great store, and yeah. uh, it's it's destination, but that's all right. That's how retail areas start by. She advertises. People find her. People come to Emeryville looking for, <coughs> for the first time in their life, they come to Emeryville because they want to go to retro for mid-century furniture. So I think. I won't oversell this retail thing, but I think we just want more people like her who, who maybe initially are more destination, but then when people come, they'll discover other shops. I just, oh, Michelle de Guzman, uh, Economic Development and Housing. I just wanted to mention the part of the whole idea, too, is that 
we're bringing in this higher density residential along these travel corridors and we want to enliven these areas. So we want to have these people move here but not abandon it during the day. So we want it to be sort of a 24 hour use. And it does get harder, especially in harder times, more marginal areas will tend to be abandoned. But as Sadish mentioned, northern, farther north, there's been a lot of revitalization of commercial that's been vacant for a long time. And it's been creeping south in a pretty, pretty quick manner, it seems, in the last couple of years. And our, our sort of goal in redevelopment is to put in place the infrastructure that is going to support that now and 10 years into the future. Okay, so what, 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 is, what does everybody think about um, the, the experience of the people living in this place? Uh, are, do, are, are people looking for a larger community area or not, or a larger greening, or is, is that not a concern? Uh, well, you I know, they, they, they bought uh, at, uh, what's the one on 40th? Uh, uh, Andante. Andante. They bought Andante like hotcakes. Yeah, I, right. I know, but and that right. has nothing. I, you know, that but looks you know, like a jail. Yeah, but that's that's so the second, yeah. you know. the second agree, level. The second level. I mean, that's over. That's probably at least two thousand square feet. That's if a, they design it well. Right. We have a fair amount of space right. there to yeah. work with. So I I think if you, I mean you could even extend the footprint of that indoor space a little bit and maybe mm -hmm. provide an indoor gathering area there. Well, it could be sort well. of like an area for uh, building events, um, homeowners meetings, um, right. you know, uh, right. social yeah. hours for the residents of the building. Could almost be like a semi-indoor outdoor space right. with doors that open up. So yeah, it feels like an enclosed nice veranda space. almost. Uh, and and mm -hmm. to me that's that, that adds value plus it also gives the residents a, a, a meeting place plus if you if we can plant and have some greenery. I, I'm, I'm, yeah. mm -hmm. I'm very yeah, into I, that the would color be green in that triangle area. Uh, the the more street trees we can fit in, squeeze in there, I think the better. We we really do need to green it up. Yes, we're all for that. I'm, I, I'm typically the one that pushes for a common room and you know yeah. improvements <laughs> like that. But, I mean, this is a city project. We're trying to provide housing. That's at a yeah. moderate to lower yeah. scale. Uh, Still, how, I agree it has to be livable, but uh, I think know, it's a balancing act. Yeah, I remember our discussion about some of the other developments, how as we go and we see what happens, we don't want to go backwards, right? Mm -hmm. right? right. That's where my head's at. Yeah. Yeah. And on the other hand, then we do need to give them variances and other things. Mm -hmm. you know? I, I have yeah. No, mm -hmm. I have no I do think it's really important to, to have some sort of a community space because I can just speak for the building that I'm in, which is 1500 Park Avenue, and it's a great building. It's a renovated warehouse, but uh, and we've got a wonderful entry area with all the landscape treatment, but we wind up having our, um, board, our homeowners meetings out on the landing off the elevator. And we really don't have a space where people can meet. So to try to get residents to get to know each other as people come and go, we just have these sort of little happy hour kinds of things out in the hallway. And it's very awkward. And, and we try to keep it quiet and short so that we don't disturb other people. So I think it's really important to have some sort of a community gathering space so that you can create that sense of community in the yeah. building and you don't have people just coming and going. I think it's very important. Um, since it is a study session, is there anyone from the public, we don't want to ignore the public here, that, that has any thoughts or uh, concerns about the project at this point in the process that they want to share? Okay, we don't see anyone. Um, commissioners? Yeah, I think I, I would like to uh, agree around the community area and, and also green space I had initially set on the roof, but that triangle area looks like for the outdoor part would work and, and having, you know, the, the furthest most east part as kind of an indoor outdoor would be a good idea. Um, I like the idea of particularly in this part of San Pablo Avenue, having the higher density, 120 units. I mean, that sounds like a lot, 120 units to the acre, but in fact, it's 36 units. 
Um, I'm normally, as, as you all know very well, really an advocate of three bedroom units, but this is a place that, you know, it doesn't necessarily work. And, and so I'm fine with the two bedroom units in this place. Uh, given where its location is at such a huge intersection and the pedestrian issues. Um, but 36 units is still going to provide a fair number of people that will help um, bring more, more activity to the retail uses that are in the area. So I like that. Um, I, li I like the fact that there'll be, uh, that the parking problem will be solved in a, in a, uh, in an efficient way with the, with the lifts. And I really like the fact that it's more than a third uh, designated as affordable. It goes well beyond mm -hmm. um, our inclusionary ordinance. So that's very exciting uh, in general. I mean, there, there are definitely things to be tweaked, um, particularly that round corner and, and working with open space and community space. But I, I'm really very much um, liking the concept as it's developing. I like the project. The area that it's going in is a run-down area, and this is going to be an improvement. Yeah, I'm uh, pretty much echoing what Ed said, and I was just waiting for this three-bedroom thing, so I'm really pleased that he actually concedes that we don't need to have any here. So This is not the place for it. Doesn't mean you won't hear hear from me on you know next yeah. month. We wouldn't expect anything <laughs> less, Ed. <laughs> okay, Jim. Any more you want to add, or you no, it's so okay. pretty much covered? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I feel like I went through my list. Uh, Paul, anything else you want to add? Yeah, I babble after ten o'clock. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, um, have we provided you with enough guidance and direction? Yes. Yes. yes definitely. Okay. Thank Great. you. Thank you. It's a great start. Okay, uh, our final study.